Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Movies. I'll be doing a, today a review of Overlord, the 2018 movie which was produced by J.J. Abrams and was written by Billy Ray, Mark L. Smith and directed by Julius Avery. Now I know I'm late to the party with this one as I haven't actually saw this one until uh, this morning and I must admit it was one of the better films I've seen over the last few months, and I wish I saw this in the theatres in IMAX. So the plot is very simple. It's uh, on the eve of D-Day. A paratrooper squad is sent to destroy a German radio tower in an old church in a small French town. That's the main plot. However, things take a nasty... Uh, sidestep when they discover secret Nazi experiments underneath the church. Straight off the bat, even from the, you know, the trailers and what was done, you would think this was a Nazi zombie movie. It's not. It's completely, whatever you think it is, get it out of your mind. And the film is very, very unpredictable. And I absolutely loved it. I got to admit, the gore was high, the violence was high, and it shows you exactly what war is. War is horror and war is horrible. It's a bit like how the beginning of Save a Private Ryan. That shows you exactly how war was. But going back to the movie. So what we have. We have when they're flying over to go be uh, dropped in. The plane is actually shot down before they can reach the target. Leaving five survivors. Corporal Ford and soldiers Boyce, Tibet, Chase and Dawson. Corporal Ford is actually played by Wyatt Russell, so that's Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn's uh, son. And Private First Class Ed Boyce is played by Jovan Adipo. And he steals the movie. He is absolutely fantastic in the role. For a horror film on this level, the acting shouldn't be this good. But, obviously now, this day and age, a lot of people are making horror films. And horror has become big business once again. And now they're just getting top class actors to be in them. Which, even ten years ago, you wouldn't have saw it. But when you get into the film and it gets going, oh, it is literally 100 miles per hour. And until the very end. It's, it doesn't let up. It's on for one hour and 50 minutes. And of those time, you're literally you're watching it and that's it. So, a little bit of history with Overlord. The initial story was actually conceived by J.J. Abrams and screenwriter Billy Ray. And obviously Billy Ray has penned the script. Paramount actually acquired the film in late in 2017. And Mark L. Smith was brought in to polish the script and give it more of uh, a horror vibe going through it. Obviously, February 1st, 2017 is when Bad Robot Productions and Paramount Pictures announced that Julius Avery would be directing the film. Going through when it was being made, because I do remember there was a lot of speculation that the film was actually going to be the fourth instalment of the Cloverfield film series. But it was a good thing is when April 25th, 2018 is when Abrams denied this at CinemaCon and said it was his own film and it's his own series, which is brilliant. I don't know if they can do any more, but if they do and they find a good way, I'm all for it. Because there is a f um, rumours that a sequel will be abound sometime. And obviously, so we're going into this, is the visual effects is just absolutely spectacular. I I just love it. It's say you know, it's not, it is and it isn't a zombie film, but you need to take your mind out of that, and you need to remember like right, okay, completely forget everything you th thought you knew about Nazi zombies, or even if you've seen like uh, Dead Snow, Dead Snow Two, Red or Dead, it's not that sort of thing. It does go about the actual history of Hitler and how his Nazi army were condoning experiments. And trying to create super soldiers. It does have that in it. But it kind of goes their own way as well. Which I think is actually really, really good. So it actually, um, it was produced on a budget of $38 million, 
and it made 41.7 million worldwide. Not exactly a lot, but it made its budget back, which is great. And in the United States and Canada, Overlord was released alongside The Grinch and The Girl in the Spider Web, which are both big, big movies, obviously. Girl in the Spider's Web didn't exactly make that much money, but I thought Girl in the Spider's Web was a great film and it actually deserves a bit more recognition than what it got. And obviously The Grinch, around Christmas time, big, big family film, and obviously it made quite a bit of money. You know, $510 million the Grinch has made on a budget of 75. So they were obviously like, yes, they made their money back then times it, you know. It became the highest grossing holiday film of all time that did. So you can see when that was released alongside Overlord, a lot of people weren't going to be seeing Overlord. Obviously, you know, around Christmas time, well, beginning of November, and you got a family film where you can take everyone, or you got this balls to the wall action horror film called Overlord. Again, if you've got kids, you're going to take them to the Grinch. However, I take my kids to see Overlord because I just love that shit. And I'm pretty sure if, if, if I had kids, they would too. Like I say, it's... Fingers crossed going forward we get some more. And if not, then this would just be a great film to have as a companion piece to Dawn of the Dead remake. Or even the, um, the actual original... Uh, Dead series. You know, watch all them, then watch the remake of Dawn of the Dead, and then throw in Overlord. Hey, thanks for listening and uh, tuning into the channel. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.